This is a very interesting case. The patient had five impacted wisdom teeth, and the wisdom teeth were fairly easy to extract. If you see some of my other wisdom teeth videos in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com, including the one on the most difficult impacted mandibular wisdom tooth ever extracted. These are quite easy, but it's interesting when you have one that's pretty easy and you can just elevate them. And the thing that made this case even a little more intriguing was she had five impacted wisdom teeth. So two in the upper right and then four more. This is the perfect wisdom tooth to extract if you want to have easy wisdom teeth because see how the roots are conical they're all pretty fused together they're not fully formed they're about half formed so they're not going to spin and it's funny how sometimes patients will say boy i want to go see dr cutbirth he took out my friend's wisdom tooth and they didn't have a problem or say somebody is not good at taking out wisdom teeth I hate to tell you this, but it has more to do with the wisdom teeth themselves and the heritage of the patient, their parents, than it does with the person taking out the wisdom teeth once you get past a level of training. If you've got wisdom teeth like that one in the video on extraction of the most difficult mandibular wisdom tooth ever extracted it's hard and you know that patient's probably going to have some swelling you want to give them some decadron and ice and all those kind of things but they're going to have some post-op issues just like medical surgery whereas a patient like this i wouldn't expect her to have any issues at all so topical anesthesia first so you can see this is the lower left you see this on the radiograph you go, I've been living a clean life. This is gonna be an easy extraction. You're gonna put an elevator right here, elevate. When you elevate, you wanna turn the elevator toward the coronal part of the tooth first. You don't wanna really go this way because you could damage this tooth a little bit, especially if you had a crown on it or something that was up here, but just elevate it. You can see the roots are just about half formed. That's just perfect. So again, making my cut along the facial surface of the second molar. Somebody asked after the last video, where do you make your cut? This is the facial of the lower left second molar cut up the ramus, and then you cut from the distal lingual line angle of the second molar to that first cut. Don't cut back here. You could damage the lingual nerve, but you can go from the distal lingual of the second molar across to that first cut. Then you're going to cut distally, distal to the second molar, and remove what's called a distal wedge. The reason you remove that piece, if you just made this cut and reflected the flaps, and you took the tooth out, you're gonna have lost some mass and there's gonna to be too much soft tissue to suture and it's gonna be all wadded up. This way, when you remove the distal wedge, the flaps piece together perfectly. I learned that in my surgery fellowship years ago. Dr. D. Lamar Bird was the chairman of that department at Baylor Dental College. So we wanna remove it. You can see the tooth right there. Reflect that flap up the ramus so you have access to the tooth. Now in this case, my feeling is I can just elevate the tooth. Now I'm elevating it with a periodontal elevator or a periosteal elevator. Now this is a Euphredi 301. Now in this case, there could be too much. I mean, there, I don't have a space back here. I'm hoping the tissue, the bone is soft enough it'll let it just elevate, but you might have to make a bit of a cut on the distal of the tooth so you have a space to elevate it into. What I was hoping was I could go up and out so I don't need to create a space. I'd rather not cut any bone if I don't have to. I might even cut the tooth. You can see that's coming right out. Be sure to remove the follicular sac when you remove an impacted wisdom tooth. and then I'm gonna pack the socket. I only pack the mandibular wisdom teeth sockets. I don't pack the maxillary wisdom teeth sockets. I 
normally put at least two suture in a mandibular wisdom tooth flap closure, and I usually just put one suture in a maxillary wisdom tooth flap closure. So again, you're gonna go one, two, pull, one towards you, pull, one away from you, pull. Or you can go one, two, three, pull, then one, pull, then one away from you, pull. Why two the first time or three? If, it, if the stitch will hold with two, that's either sometimes it's harder to get the suture to move along the hemostat especially if you've got any dried blood on the hemostat. You want to be sure to keep the hemostat wiped off with water on a two by two. And also you want to keep the suture wiped off so it doesn't have any cake blood on there because it makes it harder to do what I did right there. Move the suture along the hemostat. Okay, so here's the upper. See, I've got the two by two back here in the back of the mouth. Always put that back there because you don't want that tooth to pop out like a pea and the patient aspirate it or swallow it. Because even if they swallow it, you need to send them to the emergency room and have a radiograph taken to be sure they haven't aspirated it. So the best, what is that? Ounce of prevention is worth a pound to cure. Just put the two by two back in the back of the mouth and you won't have to worry about that. One, two, away from me. Pull then one toward me and pull tight. And then one other one away from me and pull tight. Now local anesthesia again. I always start with the lower left wisdom tooth and then go to the upper left, then the lower right, then the upper right. The lower left is always the hardest just because of access or usually it's the hardest. And then finish the left side and then you're kind of on the home stretch when you get to the right side. So again, this is the lower right. Make that cut up the ramus on the, from the facial of the second molar in that line. You don't want to get over here on the lingual and cut all the way to bone to the facial surface of the second molar. See, I'm cutting all the way to bone, reflecting that flap. Cutting up the ramus with the scissors under the periosteum. You want to reflect the whole flap. It's a full thickness flap. Sometimes that tissue can be pretty tough. Sometimes you have to actually make more of an incision there. Then you cut from the distal lingual line angle of the second molar over to this first cut. So I'll say that again. You cut from the distal lingual line angle of the second molar over to that first cut. Don't cut out here in the lingual. You could damage the lingual nerve. But see, I'm just going to the distal lingual line angle, then cutting across to the bone on the distal of the second molar. And that lets you elevate that distal wedge. And by removing that piece of tissue, number one, it gives you access to the wisdom tooth, but number two, it lets the flaps close completely once you remove the, the tooth. If you don't, cut the distal wedge, there's too much tissue and it bunches up right there. See, that was easy, that just elevated out of there. Remove the follicular sac. And place the packing. Somebody asked what the packing is, this is it. The mix of these two paste in the resorbable mesh. Okay, and this is 3-0 suture. So the gauze is resorbable, so it's very important it resorb. So it's gonna resorb after a week or two. It's gonna just dissolve away. Leave about two to three millimeters of suture 
past the knot. If you cut it right at the knot, it'll the knot will come undone. See one, two away from me, pull, and then one toward me, pull, and then one away from me again, and pull. And I'm going to put two suture in mandibular wisdom teeth flaps. So now I'm going to remove the upper right two wisdom teeth. See, this is impacted and there's a little supernumerary tooth behind it. These were, as far as wisdom teeth extraction go, these were easy. See, I've got the two by two back here. Because of the, the way we caught them, this young woman was about 17 or 18. And the teeth were about, the roots were about half formed and that's perfect. They just roll right out of there. See, then we've got another a supernumerary tooth back here, creating a little larger flap just so I have access to that supernumerary tooth. I love doing surgery, but there's not really anything in dentistry that I would want to do that exclusively all the time. I love being in a general restorative practice with a lot of training and a variety of different things so we can do multiple procedures. And there's the wisdom tooth. You can see it moving right here. It's kind of like a pea, slick like a pea. You're trying to, that's why you want the two by two back here because you could, if you grab it with the rongeurs, it could just pop out and you want it to be caught by the, the two by two. And there it is. You want a variety of elevators because you've got to find the one that works. There we go. I'm going to remove the follicular sac and then we're going to suture with one or two sutures. When we're working on the right side, we've got three or four two by twos folded together on the left side. So this is a case I think most dentists could do if they have some surgical training because they were easy extractions. I showed some another case that you do not want to attempt unless you've got some serious surgical training because those can be a real problem. Just planning your case before you start is so significant. Knowing what you're going to do before you reflect the flap, because you can get lost with the blood and the soft tissue. You could get disoriented, and I've seen it happen to dentists before when I was in my fellowship and then even when I've been in practice. Like I said, I've had a dentist or two bring a patient over to the office for me to take out a wisdom tooth when they were had started and they got disoriented and, and couldn't finish it.
So these are the five wisdom teeth. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you ready to take your dentistry practice to the highest level possible? Of course you are. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com where you will get Dr. Cupper's greatest work and best cases. Here's what you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You will get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos and Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference, before and after photos of Dr. Cupper's fantastic restored cases. Cases. And all of this, I repeat, all of this is just $40 a month. This is something you cannot pass up. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com.